He can eat it. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Appreciate everybody coming tonight. I've uh, got a handout for you tonight. So you have homework. Come on. In. This is Bible study. So you got to go home and study. Amen. Uh, turn to Proverbs. And I like to do this kind of stuff in my church. Uh, give you something you can keep. I hope you'll keep this. Uh, these are eight points that I think are critical to our Christian growth. Okay? Uh, we'll see in a minute. God wants you to grow. Amen? The title kind of says a lot. It's, uh, this is how-to. This is a how-to sermon. Uh, we always like those. But it's uh, how to grow and transform and conform to the image of Christ. Listen, you were made for a purpose. Amen. 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 It was not some accident that uh, happened, or God just not did not just make the universe and man and say go do something. Uh, he had a plan. Amen? Amen. He wants to be the father, and he wants you to be a son. And the picture of a son is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the perfect picture of a son. God said in him he is well pleased. And the Bible teaches us we're supposed to grow and conform to the image of his son. So I'm preaching to the serious disciple tonight. Uh, if, if we, we really need to be serious about our purpose for life. Amen. Uh, and the word disciple almost has no meaning anymore. You know, I'm a Christian, but some people, they don't have to go to church. They don't pray. They don't read the Bible. Um, they're too busy doing things to not get close to God. Not praying the way we ought to be praying. We ought to be talking to Papa a lot. Amen, a lot. You are, your, your number one goal in life, I'll always say it, is to develop a relationship with your Heavenly That's Father. Right. That's, right. That's why He made you. Amen. He wanted children. Uh, yeah. The Bible's absolutely clear. And he did not, he didn't want just any children. He's got a plan of how he wants you to grow up and be like. Amen. Amen. So I hope this would be a help to you. And it may, it may look contrite to you, but there's a lot of reasoning behind this. A lot of years of thinking. And these are key things. There's always more things you can add, but these are key. And I want you to look at them and we'll, we'll discuss them a little bit. So look at Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. You'll, you'll know most of the verses. I want to apply them and expound them a little bit. Amen? Amen. And I'm hoping that you'll, you'll take to heart and see, see how we need each point here. So Proverbs 3, uh, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. Boy, we do that a lot. We like to yeah. do stuff our way. Amen? Wow. God says don't lean on that. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct Thy path, or your path, I wrote on here. It's for you. Amen? So God, God will direct your path if you'll trust in Him with all of your heart. But it says, for Him to do that, you need to acknowledge Him. And that means, it says, in all your ways, in everything you do. And I've taught, I taught a lot about practical things with this verse. Like, if you're going to buy a car, you should be praying to God. Amen. What car should I buy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're going to buy a house, you should be praying to God. What house should I buy? You non-married people, you should be praying, uh, who should I marry? Amen? Amen. And pray for God to lead you to somebody. Amen? That's one of the most biggest things you can ever have in your life. Uh, uh, what church should I go to? You should go to Harvest Baptist Church. Come on, amen, yeah. It's in Urington, not too far from here. Just take sure it's highway down the road. Yeah. Don't tell Brother Robinson about that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we love, I love Brother Robinson. Uh, you'll never know how much. He's been so good to me and my family. And uh, wonderful. You're blessed to have a real preacher. <laughs> you, you don't know how blessed you are. Right? You know what? There's a church in Silver Springs, a big one. Doesn't have a pastor right now for a little while. There's another Southern Baptist church. It went to community, just on Highway 50, just down the road, big building, everything. No pastor. And, and Dayton, the Calvary Baptist church, has been there forever. He just up and resigned. There's three major big building churches right there. No pastors. 
You young men, we, we are in need of pastors. Amen. And God would love you to be one. Amen. You say, God didn't call me. Volunteer. Isaiah volunteered. God said, who will go? He said, I will. And then God picked him and proved it. <laughs> so uh, you can volunteer. If he rejects you, you'll know it. Amen. Amen. But he'll probably take you. Yeah. That's good. Anyway, if you're the last guy on the bench, he's liable to take you. Amen. You're getting the game. Come on. But, and, and whatever you do. But tonight, I want you to think about acknowledging him. Uh, let him in on uh, your growing in the Lord. Let him direct your path. How is he, he going to lead you how to grow? Okay, we're not talking about cars and houses now, but, but you, how to grow. Uh, you need to ask God to lead you and show you. Yeah. Amen. And he called me here to help you, to show you. Amen? Amen. So number one, it says acknowledge him. Letter A there, it says acknowledge him in growing and he will direct your path. He will, he will lead you to the things you need. Okay? B, acknowledge his will for you, let's look at 2 Peter 3.15. We'll use a, some verses for each one. 2 Peter and 3.15. I can get there. Yeah. Everybody got that quicker than me? Amen? Amen. All right, let's read some of these. 2 Peter 3.15. Uh, it says this, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. He wants everybody to get saved. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, uh, as also in all his epistles, these are the ones that Paul wrote, in them of these things, which are some things hard to understand. There's a lot of hard things to understand in the Bible, amen? It takes some digging in, some work, okay? Uh, which they are, and unlearned and unstable rest in those. They have trouble. And they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You need to, you need to learn to, what the Bible means. That's right. You have to work at it. Listen, if you're, you have trouble studying and learning, just work at it harder. Work longer. Amen? I always taught all my life, I'm the turtle. You know the rabbit and the turtle? The rabbit's fast, but who won the race? The turtle. I'm just steady, 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 steady. Just keep learning. Amen. Just keep growing. And God will bless you. By the way, the Bible says you can pray and ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you and show you, give you understanding. Get some help. Amen. Amen. Verse 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, Fall from your own steadfastness. Fast, steadfastness. In other words, don't go backward. You're supposed to be growing. You don't grow backward. Amen? Amen. A tree doesn't grow backward. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in Nevada, I guess. Could, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but anyway, verse 18 is the key one. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. It is God's will. For you to grow, amen, in grace and knowledge of him. You need to know Papa. The Lord, Lord, the Lord is many things. It says Jesus is the firstborn amongst many brethren. He's my brother. Amen. He's, my, he's the father. Isaiah 9, 6. A uh, child is born and he should be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. He's my father. He's my brother. He's God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> And he added the man nature. He's God who took on the form of the flesh and all of that. But, uh, so we need to grow in grace and knowledge of him. We've covered grace here a number of times. The, the best meaning I know of grace altogether of all the Bible is it's God working in you, on you, and through you. And his end, his end game or his hope, the Bible says if he died for you, Okay, you need to live for him. He wants to live through you. He wants to work through you. Well, you got to grow if you're going to do that. Because you're going to have to put down the old man and let the new man rule. Amen. We got to grow. We need to grow. And God's goal, goal for you to grow is to grow to conform to the image of Christ. That's our lofty, high goal. Amen. So I'm speaking to the serious disciple tonight. You need to have that in your heart that you want to do that. 
Okay. The, the next one, number two, is desire. Let, go to First Peter. It's right close by. Chapter two. First Peter, chapter two. Uh, it, says, uh, it says this, verse 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. That kind of sums up just about everything almost. Then verse 2, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. This means you've got to have a desire. You have to want to grow. You've got to want to. Yep. We teach <laughs> in our circles. Amen. Yeah, you're not going to grow. You're not going to try to. You're not going to become more like the Lord if you're not trying. Right. And you got to have that want to. Amen. Listen, if you don't, you don't have that. You need to get that because that's why you exist. Yeah. That's why you were created. And the world's going to try to get your mind on everything else. The world's going to try to eat up all your time. And please understand this: to grow and conform to the image of Christ does not mean you can't have a wonderful life. You can still go on vacations. You can still do fun activities. You can still have barbecues, amen, and potlucks, amen, and dessert after church, amen. Uh, don't get me on food. I'm on a diet. Come on. Yeah, well, but look, this first thing you've got to acknowledge God, his will for you is to become like Christ. That's his goal. He's looking for someone that will be like Christ. And we need to work at that. And ladies, that doesn't mean just male. That means a dedicated, faithful Christian. Amen? Amen. That has the, the mind and stuff. We'll look more at that. So num number two then, after you uh, know God's will for your, eyes, your life. Matter of fact, it's a command and a mandate that we conform to the image of Christ. He pre-planted before the foundation of the world that we should be conformed to the image of his son. That's, he, was, he had a whole plan. He didn't just make man and then what, sit down and say, what should I do with them? Amen. No, he had a plan, amen? Now, when he made Adam, that's a picture of what he wanted. The earth was perfect. Adam and Eve were perfect. Everything was just right. And Luke 3.38 said, Adam was the son of God. He, they made what he wanted in the first place. Amen. And when he had Adam as a son, he walked with him in the garden. And who do you think taught him how to take care of the garden? The Bible talks earlier about making bread. Who do you think taught Adam how to make bread? Yeah, that means you've got to grow the crops. You've got to mill it. You've got to make an oven. You've got to know how to make fire. You've got to have the tools. Amen. I was just teaching a little creation the other day, and we were talking about Noah's Ark. And the average Christian believes or wonders, how did Noah build that big wooden boat? I mean, like they had no tools or anything. It says... Cain's son, they were, they were metal workers right off the bat. Right. That's 1,500 years before the ark. Yeah. They had 1,500 years to figure out how to make a drill and a plane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they probably had them in the first century uh, after Adam. So they had some high-tech stuff. Amen? Yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, we don't kind of picture what really was going on. Yeah. All right, number three then. So, so God wants you, you gotta have, you got to have that desire. Listen to me, you got to work at that. I don't want to go too fast, even if I don't get done here. You can do the rest for homework. Amen. Amen. You, you got to check yourself out. Yep. Where are you at? Is, is your desire all to just to go into the world, do this, do everything the world's got? Is your desire to get to know your Heavenly Father? Right. Tell you what, everything you, everything you work for here is going to be gone one day. Right. We need to work. You need to provide for your family. You need to get things for the church. You need to have buildings. We need to do those things. Okay? God's got a lot about buildings and temples and all that. But, but we need to have the relationship with him first. Right. Yeah. Amen. So you need to let him in on it. And know, get, which, which, if you let him in on it, you're going to find out his will for you is to grow. Okay? And can transform and can form. Number uh, three is abstain. Look at 1 Peter 2, 9. Okay, right, at, right there where we were. Have we got that? Say amen. amen. Okay, it says this, 2, 9 through 11. It says, but ye are a chosen generation. This is who you are, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, 
that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wow. We're special to God. Amen. Okay, verse 10. Which in times past you were not a people, but are now a people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Praise the Lord. He had mercy on us. Amen. He let the Gentiles in. Dearly beloved, I beseech you. That means I plead with you. As strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. Hey, if you're going to grow and transform and conform to the image of Christ, Christ you've got to abstain from fleshly lust because it wars against your soul. That's right, right. The, 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 the lust of the flesh, the lure of the world is going to draw you away from Amen. trying to grow and become like Christ. Amen. You're going to have to fight that. Amen. And, and, and when your soul, get, David, one time when he was out of way, running from Saul and had to hide in caves and couldn't go to the church and uh, stuff, he says his soul got lean. Man, he longed to get, get back to hear the word of God and get close to God and, and uh, the service of the Lord and all of that. Amen? So we, you, need, you need to have some character. If you're, if you're going to grow and transform and conform, you need to... Get some character in your life and, and stay away from some stuff. Amen. Right. Amen. And the world's going to try to draw you and That's pull right. you. It's going to allure you with all it's got. You just look at the casinos. We live in Nevada. Right? They always got gold walls and flashy things and all that stuff. And the sparkling lights and all of that. Amen. My God's got some sparkling lights. They call them stars yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah. He kind of outmatches them. So... If you're going to grow, you need to stop doing some things. Caring about all the world. You need to care about God. You need to care about your heavenly Father. Why don't you think Father and Son. We're supposed to be the children of God. Amen. Number four, it says to do, to do this. If you're going to grow, you need to forget and press toward the mark. Look at Philippians. Okay. Chapter 3. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Colossians, so Philippians 3, almost there. Am I doing any good? Amen. Okay, Philippians 3.13 says this. Brethren, who's that? That's to save the children of God, amen? If you're saved, you're the, you're, you're, we're brothers because who's our father? God is, amen? And he wants that relationship to get better. I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high galling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, to me, I don't know what other preachers preach, the highest calling for us is to be the children of God. There's nothing higher that I know of than that. Amen? Yeah, we need to press toward that mark. That means work toward that goal. Amen? But, but things in your past, both things that were done to you and things that you did, both, I preached somewhat on that one time here, yeah, those things will bog you down. If you live in the past, it can stop you. Right. Stop living in the past. Forget what's behind it. So when I did teach that here, uh, the Apostle Paul, no the, there's no better example than him. He devastated many Christians' lives. They lost their homes, their businesses, their jobs. Yeah. Um, that's why they brought in money to lay at the apostles' feet, and they had to take care of the, the Jews that were kicked out of their families. And the big families, you know, they would work a farm together, and maybe this son had maybe one-fourth of the land was his to work, and he got the crops and could support his family. When they followed Christ, they kicked them out, said they're dead to me. They had nowhere to go. You didn't just go to Walmart and get a job. Amen. So uh, they gave up a lot. But, but listen, things happen to you, and there's things that you have done, and it'll bog you down. You need to forget what's behind and press toward the mark. It'll never completely go away. You need to put it down. You can't, you can't get rid of all of the memories in your head. Amen. But, God, but Paul, so Paul said, I die daily. He didn't physically die. He meant I put that stuff away. He said, he said, I counted all those things I did to get ahead for the Jews as dung, as waste. Yeah, I counted it loss for, to win Christ, to know Christ. So we need to listen to the apostle. Amen. Yeah. 
So I, I, you need to work at that. Listen, these are serious things. This is not just some little list I made to go shopping with. Amen? This is, there's a lot of thought here. You got to want to do it. You need to know the purpose God has for you. That's to become Christ-like. Amen? And you need to abstain from evil or it's going to pull you away. You're going to be in turmoil. When you're all in turmoil, you're not going to be successful at what you're doing. And you need to forget what's behind. That can hinder you greatly. Number five, uh, go to Romans 12.1. It says to present. Amen. What does God want you to present? Romans chapter 12. I'm deliberately trying to use the verses. Amen. I'm hoping you'll keep this sheet and look at it a lot and see where, you're at, where you are on it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Everybody have it? These are verses you might know. Again, he says, I beseech you. So Apostle Paul is using these key verses to plead with you, to reason with you. Beseech you therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. You know what? The Christian life is a sacrifice. If I'm going to abstain from fleshly lust and all those things that are not good for me or a waste of my time, uh, uh, that's a sacrifice. I've got to give that up. Amen. Yeah, the, I've given up over the years many things I've given up for to follow God. Amen. Amen. Uh, and then it says this. God says to present your body a living sacrifice. First of all, he doesn't need you to die for him. He's looking for somebody to live for him. Amen. He wants us to serve a living sacrifice. So he did the dying for us. We don't need to do that. Amen. Holy. And that, that word's almost gone today. I'm so fed up with... Christianity anymore. Other than a really good church, you can't even preach about being holy. Amen? Right. Holy means pure and separate in its simplest right. definition. Right. Yeah, and when Moses met the burning bush and God was speaking to him there, he said, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Right. Why? Because the bottom of your shoes are dirty. Yeah. Don't, don't right. pollute me. His, his holiness is pure and separated. He's, he's different than that spot. This spot's holy, amen? Right. Our God is holy. Yeah. And we need to be holy. He says, be holy for he is holy. Well, we're not, I don't know if we're working on being holy. I read some great books when I was younger, Pursuit of Holiness. What, what good books are teaching you how to work at doing that, amen? Right. So I've not achieved it in totality. I've tried to work at it, amen? And all it is is, say, separated from the bad and the world and system and our own flesh. Amen. Amen. And, and uh, separate and pure. Try to keep yourself pure. Amen. So he says, uh, present your body a living sacrifice, not just any sloppy old body, but a holy body, yep. acceptable unto God, which is reasonable service. Hey, the Bible says it's reasonable you serve him. He gave his life for you. It's reasonable you ought to give your life for him. Amen. Here's the promise. He said here, when you give your life to him, if you fully surrender, he said he'll give it back to you better. Amen. We think, oh, my life's gone. I'm going to give it to the Lord. He said he'll give it back to you better both now and then. Amen. Both. Teach us both. Yeah, we're deceived by the devil. You think if you sacrifice for God, you're going you're to never have any fun again. You're not going to have a life. Uh, we do all kinds of stuff. Amen. Amen. Michael's always on vacation. Brother Mike. I shouldn't say Michael. Yeah. I just thought I'd pick on you a little. Amen. <laughs> no. Uh, I bet they do a lot of things together with your family, right? Yeah. And uh, God wants you to have a good time here. But we need to keep it pure and holy and separate from the lusts of the world. Amen. So I challenge you. Will you present yourself to the Lord? Yeah. I was thinking this about this the other day. I've been teaching 46 years, and I realized I've never prayed this way to God. I never, I never knelt down and said, my king, what do you have for me today? I've never said those words. He's the king of kings. He's a, he's a king. He's the king of the universe. I never, never approached him as my king. Amen? And that's, that thought is new to me after all this time. Uh, 
Well, look, you read the Bible when Nebuchadnezzar was king. When they walked into him, they were scared to death of him. You look cross-eyed, he could have you put to death. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, when, when Esther walked into the throne room, the custom was of that day, if you walked into the throne room when the king was on the throne, and you walked in unannounced or uncalled for, right. the guards just killed you right then and there. Yeah. Only, only thing could save you if the king held up his scepter right. that stopped him. Right. Yeah, they, they had a lot of power. Our king's mightier than any earthly yes. king. Amen. 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 And we, he's allowed us access to the throne. Wow. Have you ever prayed like that? So, let me go on here. It's serious. Will you really, will you present yourself to the Lord? Say, Lord, here am I. Who, who would do what Isaiah did when he said, Lord, here am I? God said, who will go? He's still saying that today. That's right. we, we, you know how many churches there are without a pastor in our That's circles? Right. We don't have any young men want a pastor anymore. Yeah. I've talked to some and I said, well, I, I want to, I'll preach and witness, but I don't want a pastor. It's not easy to pastor. We get slandered, criticized, cut down all the time, blamed for everything. Amen. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I've taught this for many years. If you, if you think negatively of me or criticize me, double it. I'm twice as bad as you think. Amen. <laughs> it's not going to get bad. <laughs> you know, just laugh when somebody criticizes you. Just laugh and go on. Amen. Because it's never going to stop. The devil's name is slanderer. It's never going to stop slandering. Always going to be false rumors and lies and uh, yeah. name calling. Man, Christians are so weak today. If somebody criticizes you, you're going to just quit because you don't want to be embarrassed. Man, we need to stand up for God. Amen. A child of God needs to stand up for God. Amen. You need to defend your father and represent your father. Amen. So we need to present ourselves to the Lord. If you give yourself to the Lord, and remember that grace, God working in you, on you, and through you, you give yourself to him, he's going to do a lot through you. Amen. The only thing that stops him from working is you. Amen. Brother Servi gets in the way of stopping God from doing a whole lot more than he could do. Uh, one of the great preachers in the past said, the world's never seen what God could do with a man that was 100% surrendered to God. Yeah. Get rid of self and let Jesus have you, there's no telling what he can do. You say, well, I'm nothing special. He doesn't, he doesn't need anything special. He needs you. The greatest ability there is, is availability. You just need to say, here I am. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. He used Gideon. He was no great soldier. Amen. And he used many people that were just ordinary people. Most of the apostles, a number of them were just fishermen. Amen. And they were and a couple others, tax collectors. What good are they? Amen. Amen. God can use a tax collector. He could use you. Amen. Yeah. Back east in the Appalachian Mountains, they used to use tax collectors for target practice. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so seriously, this is God talking. Will you present yourself to God? Will you say, Lord... I understand your will is for me to grow and conform to be like Christ. Yeah. Will you show me? Will you lead me down the paths I need to go? Amen? Amen. Next thing on there is transform. The same place, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Okay? And it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What's the ultimate will of God? That you be a child of God like Christ. Amen? Come on, say amen. There goes my amen crowd. I just lost my amen crowd. Amen. amen. Okay. Yeah. God wants you to transform. Listen, growth means transform. You put a seed in the ground, this little thing in the ground, whatever it is, it doesn't, and if it grows, it doesn't stay the same. It changes, it transforms, okay? You can put a little, little tiny seed like that in the ground and it can grow to be a 50-foot tree, amen? Yeah, so God wants us to grow and change. To what? Into the image of Christ. He wants us to be like Christ. That don't, that don't mean you're going to start a new religion, okay? He already founded the church. You just need to 
live and uh, get a relationship with the Father like he had. He said, I always do the will of the Father. He presented his body a living sacrifice. And he did. Amen. And he also had, he was the one called to go and die for us. But he lived 33 years for us first without sin. That, that's to me the greater feat than dying on the cross. Wow. So we need to transform. It says, by renewing of your mind. Look at Philippians chapter 2. How do you, how do you renew your mind? Okay. Philippians chapter 2, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, if I can get there. Philippians chapter 2. This is my, my goal. I'm not a dynamic, exciting preacher. God gave you Brother Robinson. Amen. I'm just a practical studier and builder, and I make charts. Uh, somebody was just talking to me about my book with the charts and the timelines and and uh, oh, what else do I got there? Pictures. I got pictures to help aid in the study for my Daniel Revelation. Yeah. Uh, those, I just want to give you things that will help you achieve what you're supposed to achieve. Amen? So Philippians chapter 2. Let's see where I'm at here. Back one page. Verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, Fulfill you my joy that you be what? Like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. He wants us all to have this unity of goal and purpose of mind. Amen? Amen. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. Hey, I don't care who gets the glory. Right. I just want to see the work of God go forward. Amen? Amen. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I would be thrilled if some of you could rise up and preach ten times better than I could and build better works than I could. Amen? Uh, we need you. You young men, we need some of you. Eh? We, need some, we need some preachers. Amen? And we need just men of God. If you're Christ-like, you'll be a man of God. And ladies, I mean ladies too. Okay? It says, and don't esteem vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. You should be always trying to build somebody else up. Always. Oh, I was talking to somebody the other day. I can't remember who it was. But he said, you know, all his life he worked in his trade. And he would always try to teach the guys under him all his trade. Uh, you know, that's not very common anymore. And I did that too. All the years I was in construction, get a young kid there, I would start to teach him if he wanted to learn. I didn't want to waste my time. I'd show him how to read a blueprint. I'd tell him how to... How, how this works and how you lay out the walls. And, and I boosted them a long way, along their um, rising up, amen? amen? And a lot of times they got good quick, the guys that had some skills. Yeah, and I didn't care if they could take my job. I wasn't worried about it. I'd just go get another one if they rose up and took mine. But they never did. But they went out, off and left us because they were foreman class and now we didn't have a job for them to be the foreman. And they went somewhere. But you know what? I was happy I helped them. Yeah, I wanted them to succeed. should always help other people. And God will, you reap what you sow. God always raised me up. I'll always help other people. Amen. So, again, this is the mind of Christ. You esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. We need to care about others. When Cain killed his brother in the Bible, and God says... Uh, uh, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? You know what? You should be. Amen. We need to care about helping one another. Amen? Amen. Verse 5, here's key. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. If you're going to conform to the image of Christ, you need to think like Christ. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Amen? You're not going to get anywhere if you don't think like him. But if you're going to be like him, you need to think like him. Amen? Amen. We, 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 that bracelet was famous, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, you need to take that seriously. What would he do in this situation? What would he do in this one? You need to think like him. You're going to need to know the book to think like him. And he cared about others. He gave his life for others. Remember, in his temptation, Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world. He said, the fame and the glory and the power, I'll give it all to you if you'll worship me. He said, no thanks, basically. <laughs> yeah. So 
Hey, we need to think like Jesus. Amen. Who, verse 6, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Uh, okay. He, he was God in the flesh. Amen. And his man's side thought it not robbery to be equal with God because God wanted it that way. Amen. Verse 7, but he made himself of no reputation. He deliberately lowered himself down. Okay. And took upon him the form of a servant. Wow. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That was what he was called to do. If you acknowledge God in everything you do, he's going to call you to do certain things. He's going to direct you to do certain things. Amen? Amen. And you need to humble yourselves and do that. You need to yield your will to God. He's only promised to bless you if you do that. To reward you if you do that. You can't lose if you follow God. You can't lose. Amen? Amen. Listen, you only get one chance here to be great there. Yeah, right. and, uh, you know, and everyone, I, every preacher I know in our circles that really works night and day for God, they're not doing it for rewards. Right. They do it because they love them. Right. Yeah. It's just a bonus that he gives you all the rewards. Yeah. Amen? So we need to think like Christ. Uh, it says, so to be transformed, you need to renew your mind with what? The mind of Christ. You need to get rid of, I need to get rid of Brother Servi, the old man, and start thinking like Jesus does. Amen? So if I care about others, I would, I would stay up all night making you a list. Amen? Yeah. How many of you stayed up last night making a list for everybody? Come on. You didn't have to preach. Amen? Yeah. So is this a help? Amen. These are key principles. If you're going to succeed, okay, it says to grow, and that's change, that's transform, to what? And conform. Okay? That word conform means this. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're on the last one. Doing good. Okay? Romans chapter 8. If you got it, say amen. All right. But the last one is to conform. We're supposed to grow from where we are, transform, that means change, okay, and uh, conform to the image of Christ. 28, verse 28 says this, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, okay, to them who are called according to his purpose. What is that purpose? To conform to the image of Christ, Amen. That's his high purpose. He has individual wills if he calls you to pastor or you to be a deacon or you to be a church cleaner, you to be a Sunday school teacher, piano player, amen, all those different things you do, okay? But his main goal is that we all be what? The children of God that are like Christ, amen? Okay? So, verse 29, And whom he did foreknow, the ones he knew would come, then he also did predestinate, he predetermined or had a plan for them to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn amongst many brethren. So God, before the foundation of the world, if you take all the verses, God planned ahead that when he made man, the ones who were going to come to receive him as Savior and become the children of God, his plan was that they be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. That's God's will. So you need to, number one, acknowledge him. Let him in on uh, your life. Amen? Let him, let him in on helping you direct your path toward that goal. You've got to have a desire for that goal and all the rest of the things on the list. I hope that's a help to you. Amen. So I want you to go home and meditate on this all night long. No sleeping. Amen? And, and decide, you know what? Am I fulfilling God's plan for my life? Am I conforming to the image of Christ? Am I more Christ-like today than I was a month ago? Are you growing? Are you changing? Amen? You need to change out this mind for the mind of Christ. Amen? Amen? Maybe, maybe you'll all be a little smarter if you get his mind. Amen? <laughs> Just kidding. Let's pray. 